Hi friends, welcome back to reading. In today's lesson, we're going to read the story, Emmanuel's Dream. Remember, a dream is something you hope happens one day. Now let's take a closer look at this title. Below the title, it says, The True Story of Emmanuel Ofasu Yeboah. Hmm, what do you think that means? I'll tell you what it means. It means this is a true story. This is actually called a biography. Can you say that word with me? Biography. A biography is a true story about a real person. In it, you'll have real people, places, and events instead of made up ones. And when you read about a biography, you find out why that person's important. Let's get reading so we can find out what makes Emmanuel so important. In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two bright eyes blinked in the light. Two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry. Two tiny fists opened and closed. But only one strong leg kicked. Hmm, what is unusual about this baby? You're right, he had only one strong leg. Most people thought he would be useless, or worse, a curse. His father left never to return, but his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort, and she named her first child Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything, but he would have to get it for himself. Why do you think that she says that he could have anything, but would have to get it for himself? I think it's because she wants Emmanuel to know that he should not let his disability stop him from doing what he wants. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb coconut trees. He even shined shoes to earn money. Most kids with disabilities could not go to school, but still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you're getting too heavy. From then on, he hopped to school and back, two miles each way on one leg by himself. At first, nobody would play with him, so he saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had, a brand new soccer ball. Of course, he would share it if he could play too lunging and spinning on crutches his grandmother had found for him and kicking the ball with his good left foot. Emmanuel earned their respect. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would Emmanuel be able to join them? His friend Godwin pushed him fast so he could balance. Over and over again, he fell hard. But finally, he rode! When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market, and Emmanuel's sister and brother were too little to work. He would have to support them. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of Accra, 150 miles away, alone. He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. Emmanuel arrived full of hope. There were so many people but nobody would hire him. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg like other disabled people, but he refused. Finally, a food stand owner offered him a job and a place to live. When Emmanuel wasn't serving drinks, he was busy shining shoes. He earned money and sent it home. One morning, when he went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shopkeeper thought he was there to beg and scolded him. Insulted, Emmanuel slammed his money on the counter. The shopkeeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. When Mama Comfort grew sicker, Emmanuel went home to be with her. From her bed on Christmas Eve, she told her son, be respectful, take care of your family, don't ever beg, and don't give up. By the next morning, his mother had passed. He was heartbroken, but he knew her last words were a gift. He would honor them by showing everyone that being disabled does not mean being unable. It was a big dream, but Emmanuel had a plan. Emmanuel had a sharp mind, a bold heart, and one strong leg. All he needed was a bike. At first, nobody would help. They thought his plan to bicycle around Ghana was impossible. 
So he wrote to the Challenge Athletes Foundation all the way in San Diego, California. Let's stop and think, what was Emmanuel's plan? You're right, he planned on biking around Ghana. They sent him a bike, a helmet, shorts, socks, and even gloves. Emmanuel started training for the long ride. He persuaded the king of his region to give him a royal blessing. He went door to door asking for additional support. Finally, he hired a taxi to follow him with drinking water, a camera, and his best friends. Then he tied his right leg to the bike's frame, jammed his left foot in a flip-flop, attached to a pedal, and he rode. Emmanuel pedaled through the bustling city of Accra. He pedaled through the rainforest, over rolling hills and across wide muddy rivers. He pedaled past Odom forests and plantain farms and through the market city of Kumasi. He pedaled as trucks roared past on the narrow highways and wild animals stalked his thoughts. He pedaled through vast grasslands and into the ancient city of Tamale. He rode up, down, across and around his country, proudly wearing the colors of its flag. On a printed shirt, with the words, the pozo, or the disabled person. Along the way, he talked to those with physical challenges and those without, to poor farm workers and wealthy landowners, to religious leaders, government officials, and reporters. He wanted everyone to see him and his disability. He wanted everybody to hear him and his message. The farther he rode, the more attention he got. Children cheered. Able-bodied adults ran to ride along with him. People with disabilities left their home and came outside, some for the very first time. The young man once thought of as cursed was a national hero. He completed his astounding journey, pedaling south to the sea and back up to Accra, nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. But his success got even further than that. He proved one leg is enough to do great things, and one person is enough to change the world. On this last page, it has a quote from Emmanuel. In this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. Wow, this story is so special. Emmanuel sets a goal to bike around Ghana, and then he works hard to reach his goal. Think about your dreams. What goals do you have? If you work as hard as Emmanuel, you will be able to achieve all of your dreams just like him. Thanks for reading with me today. I'll see you later.